is the Gallant, a Tier 5 Premium British Destroyer. It's the only British Destroyer that I have, so I don't really have much experience with British Destroyers, but you can see that my commander, Reginald Tierwit, is ranked up to 16. It's because I used to use him for inspirations at one time. I do know that the Gallant, as well as many of the other British Destroyers, feature single-fire torpedoes, which is very intriguing. So, with that, let's take a look at the setup of the ship and the commander, who I said is Reginald Tierwit. His base trait is True Grit, reduces the chance of sustaining steering gear critical damage and decreasing the torpedo launcher reload time. And this is why I used Tierwit as an inspiration. I was looking for a quicker torpedo launcher reload time. As for inspirations, I have Dang Shishang, Quantum of Solace, increases the damage of your torpedoes and improves your destroyer's concealment. And then I have Eric Bay Shifty increases the concealment of your destroyer. So, so this is basically a double concealment setup with a little bit more punch in the torpedoes. The first skill is Subsurface Venture. Reduces the torpedo launcher reload time and increases the torpedo travel speed, but it does increase the destroyer main battery reload time. The second skill is Look At Me Now increases the ship concealment rating and this is pretty much the best concealment you'll get for this destroyer with this commander setup and inspirations. The third skill is back in stock reduces the torpedo launcher reload time. The fourth skill is smoke underwater increases the smoke screen deployment time as well as its dispersion time. As for the legendary skill I haven't ranked up to legendary rank 3 I've selected smogathon it will reduce the duration of the smokescreen dispersion, but receive an extra consumable charge and lower its cooldown. The torpedo speed is increased by 10 knots when I'm within the range of an allied ship. Uh, 2.75 kilometers will activate the special effect. Maxing Tierwood out to legendary rank 4 will increase the radius up to 3.5 kilometers. Okay, so let's look at the upgrades for the Gallant. First upgrade is Aiming Systems Mod 1. Dispersion of the main battery is improved by 7%. Torpedo Launcher Traverse Speed is improved by 20%. Secondary Battery Fire Range and its Dispersion is improved by 5% respectively. The next upgrade is Propulsion Mod 2. Time taken to reach full power when accelerating is improved by 50%. As far as the loadout, we have your normal ammunition of high explosive shells, armor piercing shells, and torpedoes, which we'll get to in a minute. As far as consumables, we have the damage control party. Duration is 5 seconds, reload time is 40 seconds, and there's an unlimited number of consumables. And then we have the smoke generator consumable, which will generate a smoke screen behind the ship that reduces the risk of being detected by the enemy. The duration is 11.2 seconds only. Smoke screen dispersion is 85.9 seconds, reload time is 156 seconds, and you have four of those consumables. And then the next consumable is the engine boost, which will increase the maximum speed of the ship by 8%. Consumable duration is 120 seconds with a reload time of 180 seconds, and you have two of those consumables. I don't have any boosters set up right here, but during battle I may have some boosters loaded. As far as the camouflage, the ship comes with a Type 9 Premium Permanent Camouflage. Sea Detectability Range and Incoming Fire Dispersion is 4.5% respectively. Let's look at the stats. The hit points is 12,000. Armor is 6 to 16 millimeters, so you don't want to get hit. Artillery, you have 4 guns with a firing range of 10.2 kilometers, reload time of 5.5 seconds with an 18 second traverse speed. The shell damage is right around 2,000 with the HE shells having an 8% chance of setting fire. Torpedoes, you have two quad torpedo launchers. Reload time is 74.1 seconds. Maximum damage is 15,850. Torpedo range is 8 kilometers and a torpedo speed is 65 knots. Here are your AA defenses. 
Maneuverability, maximum speed is 36 knots. Turning circle radius is pretty good at 540 meters. Rudder shift time is also pretty good at 3 seconds. Concealment is 5.4 kilometers. Here is the armor. Uh, like I said, you don't want to get hit. As far as the overview, the ship has big yield. It has above average torpedo damage and that is awesome. Sequential. Torpedoes can be launched one by one and that is awesome when you see that in during a battle which I think we're going to highlight that in the highlights here. The Gallant was one of the United Kingdom's G-class destroyers of the interwar period. The ship participated in the Dunkirk evacuation when she rescued Allied troops from the beaches and harbor of Dunkirk. In total she evacuated around 1500 soldiers. On May 29, she was damaged during a raid from German dive bombers, but still made it back to England under her own power. She entered service in 1935, and there were 24 ships in the series. Well, that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard battle and check out some highlights. All right, we're in standard, we're in neighbors. And the one thing that really surprised me about the Gallant was the single fire torpedoes. In the past, I've been in matches where I've seen a straight line of torpedoes coming at me and I had no idea what that was. And when they would hit, they would completely devastate whatever ship I was in. So this is kind of cool if you could get it going here and the single fire torpedoes is really, like I say, kind of extraordinary. It, um, it's kind of a shock uh, when you see it, and it is something to get used to. So here I'm taking a look at the teams, and it's been a couple minutes in, and I'm heading over toward C, and I'm right on the edge of C. I don't really want to trigger it to let them know that I'm here. Even though I'm being located and now I am spotted, I'm kind of looking for the destroyer. There it is. And I do hit the smoke, but I'm kind of looking at the P-Tor Velinki. And there's the single fire torpedoes. And all eight torpedoes are going right at the uh, P-Tor Velinki. And the one thing that you see is there is hardly any kind of a spread at all. They really stay kind of in a straight line. So at extreme range, uh, the single fire torpedoes will give you more accuracy if you do get a hit. Where if you want to spread, uh, you can do the other wide spread. But here, this is kind of a tactic I've seen quite a bit actually, where a capital ship, especially a battleship, will sit there and they're just waiting for you to fire the torpedoes and then at range like this they have enough time to back up and get out of the way and we're going to see if uh, that strategy works out i've got 23 seconds to go on the reload and the p-tor Velinkny may not uh i'm probably pronouncing that wrong sorry but in any event the important part here is i don't think that uh, he is really going to be able to avoid the next salvo of torpedoes and here you can see he is starting to move forward and I'm reloaded again and I'm taking these eight shots at the uh, the Pitor Velkili. It's another bad attempt to pronounce it, but you can see that line of torpedoes going right at that battleship. So we'll see if we can get a couple hits here. They sort of look like uh, they're on a good trajectory. And I'm at three-quarter speed. I'm not really uh, going all that fast to get away from him because I want to take some more shots if uh, if I can. And that looks like three torpedoes are going to get some hits there. And that is awesome. Almost four torpedoes. But three torpedoes, 31,000 damage, two floodings right off the bat. And he does get taken out by a salvo from my teammate. And... The red team is down two ships to uh, to nine here, and it does look like uh, we're off to a great start. Torpedoes are 13 seconds away from reloading, so 
with the fast reload of the Gallant and tier width, uh, as a commander really helps that along quite a bit. Uh, these torpedoes really are kind of potent. So we're going to go around the back of this island here and uh, try to look for that battleship that I thought that I saw around the back of this island. He could be a uh, pretty long ways off so this could be a little bit of a cruise. But yeah, there is that battleship right behind the island there, the Nevada. And we're going to go hunting for him. You can see he's 12 kilometers out of range. Um, the intercept point is 12 kilometers and it is out of range. There's some torpedoes coming from my teammate, probably at this uh, sunken ship right here. And there's a couple destroyers milling around. I believe that's in C, but I'm uh, going to let them go because I'm going after this Nevada. I'm assuming with this huge lead now, we're, um, there are three ships down on the red team, so we have a, kind of a huge lead, 400 points to 272. So looks like we're on our way to win the match, which is great. Engine boost activated. So I have no reason to go back and deal with those destroyers. I uh, have every intention of going after this Nevada and try to get him with some more torpedoes, even though it looks like the uh, destroyers have sought Smoke me out. So started. even though I wanted to avoid the destroyers, there's no way to do it, it seems like here. So I'm going to go take some more shots with these eight Smoke torpedoes at the Nevada and hope that I can hold my own with guns with... Um, uh, the battle with this destroyer coming up here. There, that destroyer is gone, so there's no threat there. I can go back in the smoke and look to continue to deal with this Nevada, and he is turning away from the torpedoes, so he does see the torpedoes. He's turning out of the way of them, and looks like one torpedo is still going to get him in the rear end of the ship. So we do get another hit and another flooding. So four torpedo hits, three floodings. That is a great percentage. And I'm going to leave the smoke. There's no reason to stay there. There's no threat anywhere. And we're still up by 100 points. And we've captured uh, as many bases as the uh, red team even though the red team is on its way to capturing A. A just got reset though, but now the Nevada is within range and I'm trying to decide whether he is turning or whether he's going steady on. So I'm gonna take some torpedo shots here and there it looked like he was out of range just a little bit. So I'm gonna close in before I take the rest of Engine these shots. Deactivated. We've closed to within 5.9 kilometers of the Nevada. Our detection range is 5.4 kilometers. So it's not the best detection, but um, it's fairly decent. And these torpedoes kind of look like they are on a good track at the moment. So the Nevada is running, but fairly soon he's going to have nowhere to hide because of the boundary of the neighbor landmass right there. The neighbors are the two landmasses in the upper left and lower right of the minimap. And there I get them with two more torpedoes and a flooding and a destroyed ship. So the Nevada was not able to run we're up to 60,000 damage already, and this is on a destroyer with 1,200 hit points. So we are getting more than our fair share of damage. But here, unbelievably, it looks like we are behind right now. So they've captured two bases, and that appears to have made the big difference, especially since we are up by at least two ships. Yeah, we're up by two ships. 
and they are rapidly gaining more points than we are. So we have to get into the game over here and try to capture at least another base or destroy the rest of the red team. And personally, I'm too far away from these bases to make any difference. And I would hope that that blue battleship goes over to B over there and starts capturing B to kind of cancel out. Yeah, there he goes. He's starting to capture B. And we are 38 points behind, 35 points behind. So if we don't watch it, we're definitely going to lose this match. So both of the battleships and the cruiser is over by A over there. And they look like uh, they're not all that healthy. They're looking kind of thin. So the plan is to go over here and try to wreck them with the torpedoes because I really think that the blue team has B covered. So there's two ships over there capturing B it looks like. So I have no need to go over there and help out with that. So I have every intention of going over here and inflicting more damage on these red ships. The Iron Duke looks particularly uh, thin and it looks like he's either flooding or he's on fire and there my division mate uh, Thor gets wiped out there but he does take out the Aoba so that it was a one for one trade in ships. And whatever's going on with the Iron Duke it's really going because uh, you can see the white line is flashing. Though the Koenig looks like it's pretty much full health so I'm going to concentrate on the Koenig with this next uh, set of torpedoes but you can see that the intercept line is moving over to the right so I'm looking to get more of a broadside attack on the battleship and there the that one battleship the Iron Duke is gone I am slightly within the detection range of the Koenig so he does spot me and there is a line of torpedoes going right at him and these are the single fire torpedoes shooting them tube by tube is awesome when you get a hit and it looks like we are going to get a bunch of hits right here and three hits a high caliber metal 94,000 damage and counting because he does have three floodings but he put out the damage so the floodings have stopped I guess he had a damage con to run and he did he's coming around to uh, try to engage me it seems like and we have 20 seconds to reload so I'm hoping to do some fancy maneuvering and hold out against the Koenig and there he does get a hit on me but it's not devastating at this point but I am going to keep moving and five seconds to go on the reload of these torpedoes so we're going to set off all eight torpedoes in his direction and hope for some hits. There I'm spreading them out a little bit even though the intercept point was way over to the left. I'm sort of trying to compensate for if he were to slow down a little bit. So there, the rest of these I'm doing right on the uh, intercept marker. And I'm coming over here to put the smoke screen between myself and the Koenig even though smoke screen is about up I am out of his detection range so I'm just gonna hope these torpedoes play themselves out and there those first set of torpedoes were a big miss but here you'll see that he is going in the right direction to miss the torpedoes but now unbelievably he's turning right into these torpedoes that's coming all five of them so there's the five torpedoes we're gonna get at least a couple hits here and there it looked like there were many more torpedo hits than destroyed the Koenig. So there, 101,000 damage and oh boy, look at this. 51 seconds left and we are behind by like 70 points. So unless we destroy this Agile here, we have no chance of winning this match. And this was like close but no cigar. Well, there you go. Three ships against one, and we lose the match because we didn't capture the bases. 
All right, so the battle's ended. We did get 231,000 credits, 101,000 total damage, 25 main gun hits, 10 torpedo hits, 2 destroyed ships, 8 floodings, a high caliber medal, first place on our team, and look at that, my division mate Thor, even though he was destroyed kind of early on, he got three, three destroyed ships and finished second. And by the time it was all said and done, we cleared 195,000 silver credits. That's it for the Glant. I think it's a really fun ship to play, and I have much more appreciation for those single fire torpedoes. It's awesome the way that they go in a single line and don't spread out so when you get a hit right on target it's a devastating result or it can be this is the jaguar and i'll see you on the high seas thanks for watching hit subscribe if you like it